this is it, the final race of the year, my last chance to hitting the goal that I set for myself. In the last race, I came so close to taking the first ever win of my karting career. Let's see how I do in this race. So here we are back at Rye House for the final race of the season. And we are here for a GP60, 15 minutes qualifying and a 45 minute race. And that's a little bit longer than I normally do with the Thursday thrash ups, but it was still going to be fun because as you can see by the puddles on track and the one that I go through, it's a bit wet. And especially through the second section of pylon, the track was very slick, very greasy, which made it quite interesting. And the experience that I had in that one hour solo where the track was wet the whole time gave me a lot of confidence for this race. So I thought, I'm going to go into this and if I get pole, I'm going to start from the back. And I didn't know what, you know, I wouldn't know what the times were, whether the P2 was a tenth behind me or a second behind me. I just knew that I was going to start from the back if I was pole. And I had a, quite a lot of confidence uh, coming for this because, well, the track was wet. I had an hour to figure out how to drive on a wet track and only part of it was wet this time. So I was quite happy with that. And half the grid was made up of some of my work colleagues. So I was going there for fun, but I also had this bit of pressure on myself that this was the last chance I would have to win a race this year, as that number 16 pushes me out of the way. That's fine. Anyway, so, as I said, the track was wet and it changed quite a lot throughout the qualifying session. So I got my fastest lap on lap four, and let's take a look at it right now. So coming down the start finish straight into stadium, there's a little patch there, which if I hit it in the right place, I'd always get some oversteer. So I took a couple laps to figure out how not to hit it to get oversteer. Turn three, a little bit wobbly there. It's okay though. And nice through the turn four hairpin using all the track onto the bricks coming down to the difficult part here it's only difficult because it's wet we carry some speed through we go to the inside and kind of just try and shoot it towards the outside kind of like driving a front wheel drive car you aim and then just push it through rounding the final corner we are on the straight and we get a 48.311 which is about five seconds off normal pace now this happened and I have no idea how it just went straight I didn't hit water before that I did press the brake a little bit but you know nothing untoward uh, let's see some more action here we get it a little bit too hot in there and I do that a couple of times just trying to figure out the line how much speed I can take through some people doing some pirouettes on that wet stuff then we're just following and smash into the barrier well that wasn't great for them anyway let's see where I qualified Anyone, well there you go we got pole position and it was nine tenths faster than P2 and unfortunately my GoPro decided to not record the start of the race so I pressed the button I think on the second lap and this is where the footage starts. So we are about seventh, I think, at this point, and we're just following through, making sure that we make sensible moves, not trying to, you know, dive on, push our way past. This was a strange race as I came in with a lot of confidence and, you know, qualifying in pole, obviously very happy, but I didn't feel as if I would struggle to win. I never felt in danger of losing basically and I felt you know really calm and that was a really good feeling to have now I did pass kind of under a yellow flag situation so I figured let them have the place back it's only fair I could have just carried on but again I didn't feel like I was going to lose if I'd given that place back and for me it just meant more racing as well and I was quite happy to do that and you can see that I got past them anyway so now it's head down to catch, I think it's P2 and P1. 
So here we are on the tail of cart number three, who's in P2. And they take a bit of a wider line through pylon, which serves them well. We take more of an inside line on the wet, and that doesn't quite work out our way. Um, tires are you know, wet for both of us, but we get a good exit. We're right behind them, and we pull to the inside. We keep looking. They haven't looked back, so I just wanted to make sure that they weren't going to just turn in. <laughs> anyway, we hit that little bit of a wet patch, get that oversteer, but we make the move stick. And now it's all about chasing down cart number two, who at this point in time has the fastest lap of the race. And they are our biggest competitor in terms of lap time, and obviously they're in first. So the chase for the lead begins. At the poor timing of coming across that back marker, we managed to slip through. Great timing for us, and we took the lead. So, now it's all about keeping the lead, and the best form of defence at this point is attack. So we need to start putting through some good laps. And we do manage to gap P2. Here are a few highlights from what went on in the race. This was the guy that pushed me out of the way during qualifying, so I thought, yeah, let's just overtake him around the outside. Which we do. And then here, just go through some back markers. No one here, getting some stones flung up at me. Love that. So here comes a couple problems. We have a cart spinning ahead of us, so we have to take a bit of a slow action around the outside. And a cart comes and passes that. So this is both back markers. We're not racing them for position, that's fine. But we get a bit of a slow exit onto the main straight. 
and we look behind us, there is cart number two in P number two. Now we do have a bit of a timing issue where for some reason cart six was two minutes ahead of us, but alas, that doesn't matter anymore. And we managed to get past this slow cart, but around the outside, and around the inside, the gap opened for cart number two as he came along. So being in first and cutting through traffic does have its disadvantages. But it's okay. We've overtaken him before. We can overtake him again. And this was my mentality the whole race. It was, okay, you went ahead. I'm just going to overtake you. I didn't feel, you know, he might have pulled a second on me, but I didn't feel threatened by it. Well, they took me by surprise. I didn't think they'd be that close behind. I thought I'd pulled away, but I was chilling out. I was about three seconds a lap down on the normal pace because I was relaxing. I thought it was a long race. I'd better chill out and have some fun with the back markers. And we do get properly on it. In the next five laps, we have three personal bests, and we then set the fastest lap of the race so far. And even with all of that, this happened. And again, the battle for first continues. And there we go, we have made the move and taken back first place. It's about being consistent, keeping to our lines and just staying smooth. And a couple laps later, we're coming through some back markers. And well, this happens. All that's in my head right now is just to get going. Please not be stuck in the grass. Luckily, I'm not stuck and I can get going. And I'm looking around now to see where P2 is. I know they must be 
somewhere nearby, they can't be too far. So I want to make sure that I'm not getting caught by them. And then I also need to get into a bit of a rhythm, get back into the flow that I was in before. Because, you know, getting into a crash can kind of take you off of your flow, it take you a couple laps to get back into it. I knew that, you know, P2 was behind me. I didn't have a couple laps. I needed to hammer home and and get those laps in now. Unfortunately, a couple laps after my incident, cart number two gets into the mud, into a puddle, and he gets lapped about four or five times. So I think, let's just let him through. We can have some more battling. This isn't for the lead of the race anymore, but at least, you know, it's some racing and it'll be entertaining for me and it'll keep him going as well and so that's what I decided to do So it looks like he's caught up to a mate here, going through pylon to get a bit offline. I think he just catches some water, he's offline, cart's a little bit unbalanced and he gets wiped out. So I tried. So I thought that 45 second lap times would be the goal and where I should be getting. So let's head to the fastest lap of the race. We go into stadium and hit that water patch, get a bit of oversteer there which isn't ideal. And there's some water there, but as long as you kind of point the cart in the right way, you'll understeer out of it and not into the puddle. Nice through turn three. Very nice through turn four, I'm happy with that. Take all the curb on exit there. Now through pile on this, and a sort of dry line had formed on the outside of the second section of pile on, so we take that and we have nice exit into the penultimate corner and into the last corner. We're a little bit wide on the apex, but it's all good. And we set the fastest lap of the race with a 45.452. And that was one of those laps where I was pushing and I just felt, you know, I'm quite happy that was a really good lap. Let's see if I can do it again. Um, but as you can see, we're coming up to some back markers and we don't quite get the opportunity. But the job is done, we got the fastest lap and we turn the final corner to cross the line. And for the first time it's as a race winner. And all of the experiences from this past year have built up to this. It was the, the wet races. Uh, getting comfortable on the wet track, the battling, the being more aggressive for overtaking, all of it brought my confidence to a really good point, really high point, which ended with me getting a win in the last race of my season. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed kind of seeing my progression this season, this year, and I hope you'll join me for more next year. Don't you say it, I'm sure.